All right. So before I do anything else, uh, you make your own character in this game. You don't play as Kirito, which is nice. The other SAO games, except for Integral Factor, all force you to play as Kirito. This is my character, Fogblade. You might notice that he's got a little buddy with him. This is Rosa. She's an Arphasis, which is an AI companion you also have to create. And except for your player character and your Arphasis, you do not get to influence the gear or skills of party members. You have no control of them. So you and your Arphasis are how you get control over your loadout. Stats work similarly in this game to most other RPGs. You get points to put into these every time you level up, from killing enough monsters or finishing quests. What's a bit unique about Fatal Bullet is that almost none of these stats directly influence your normal gun damage, which takes getting used to, but isn't so bad. The major exception to this is Strength, which affects your melee damage from Photon Swords. Some stats like Dexterity and Luck they do affect your crit rate and crit damage, for example, as well as the damage you do by aiming manually at weak points, which is a huge part of optimizing combat, and I'll talk about that when we're on a field map and actually killing things later. The biggest thing that stats actually do is they allow you to equip different skills. You see on the window on the right there's prerequisites. Every single skill in this game requires a certain kind of stat distribution in order to even unlock it. Like, even if I had enough SP to get AED shot, for example, because my vitality and intelligence were too low, it would not let me unlock it at all. So, stats' main function is to let you equip different skills. Now, the kinds of skills you equip onto your character will change your class, and some examples of this are Assault, Support, Engineer, Destroyer, and so on and so forth. Skills are basically broken down into two menus, we're in one of these now, it's just the skill list, you get to see every skill in the game here and buy them all. If you notice the tabs at the top of the screen, different skills are associated with certain types of weapons. Only those weapons can have those skills slotted onto them. And then on the right you also see um, the glowing squares are, you know, which different guns and which types of guns you can equip a particular skill on. Once you've bought some skills, the skill set screen lets you equip four skills onto each weapon type. The tabs on top tell me which weapon types I currently have equipped. You can equip uh, two weapons at a time. Right now it's a pistol and an SMG, and that means I should set the skills I want to use on those two weapon types. So the other ones, I don't really use these guns yet, so I don't actually have equipped skills on them. But because I use SMGs and because I use handguns, I make sure I have some skills on these because I'm gonna need them. Gadgets are like skills, but they scale off of dexterity. Like this combat knife, for example. Slashing with the combat knife will hit really hard because my dexterity is quite high for my level, and it can chunk certain enemies. The way quests work is typically in your room you'll go to this green terminal and you can select these. Uh, usually you can just, you know, grab these. This is really slow. Don't do this. Just hit triangle or Y and grab all of them at the same time. And let's go into a map and kill some stuff really, really quickly. This is the Remnant Wasteland, the lowest level zone in the game, and when I get in here I'm gonna be way over leveled for the enemies, but it'll work for our purposes. When I walk forward a bit after loading in, some enemies will spawn, and when I kill enough to finish the requirements for a quest, that quest is immediately finished and I get the rewards from it the next time I return to town. Don't mind my party, they're just buffing the hell out of each other and themselves. So yeah, you don't need to turn quests in, you don't need to do any of that like administrative work. Once you complete the requirements, you're done immediately. So most of the time, you'll be auto-aiming at stuff using the bullet circle, which is that green circle you see that snaps to enemies inside your targeting window. So I'll walk forward and just shoot these guys. I'm super overleveled, so they die really quickly. But already my quest progress is ticking up, so I'll run forward and kill a few more. For pistols, I have the quick shot skill equipped on my right skill slot. I can hold open the skill menu by holding right bumper or R1, and I can use the skill by pressing a face button. Quick shot fires a burst of bullets at a nearby enemy. It also reloads my gun immediately after, so a smart thing to do may be to empty a magazine completely, then quick shot at the end because it doesn't use ammo, and then I've reloaded and I can keep shooting. You can critical hit in this game. 
which is largely random, but you can also deliberately target weak points by manually aiming. So as we saw, normal damage numbers are blue, right? Blue damage numbers. However, if you target an enemy's weak point, the damage numbers will be red, and it'll do significantly more damage. This is how you optimize combat, this is how you speedrun bosses. If you fight bosses just by like auto-aiming like this, you are not going to kill them very fast. You're gonna think the game is a drag, it's gonna be really really slow. To fight bosses, you want to identify their weak point, manually aim at it, and hit it that way. And uh, yeah, when you're done whatever you want to do in the field, you can return home by holding whatever your start or options button is to open your map, hit back a few times, hit the SPC clocking, and go home. And when you do go home, it'll tally up all of your field sessions' various kills, points, scores, quests completed, and award you with XP and money. Fatal Bullet has a main story that you can choose to pay attention to or ignore. It's set in the gameverse, which is a separate canon from the SAO light novels or shows, which is why some dead characters are alive in the games, for example. Fatal Bullet loosely covers the Gun Gale arc of SAO, and the game begins some time before the events of the Death Gun incident. It apparently has something called Kirito Mode, which is a separate game mode with its own set of missions, where you basically play the events of the Death Gun incident from Kirito's perspective, culminating in what I'm pretty sure is the final boss against the killer himself, which is neat, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. But yeah, that's been my overview of SAO Fatal Bullet. There's a lot of depth and nuances that I haven't covered, but this should be enough to show you if it's the kind of game you might want to play. Like I said at the start, it's very grindy and generally relaxing, but with an incredibly fast-paced gameplay loop that's just snappy, and you can sink into it for hours at a time. So if that's what you're craving to play, go for it. It's kind of what I've been needing these days. And yeah, thank you for watching, may the night keep you safe, and I will see you all later.